Hi there, Andrew here. Um, today we're going to walk you through how to use steps within the journey planner. So we've already looked at triggers uh, and if you haven't seen the triggers video that we did for you, please just um, search for triggers in the Fresh Desk Help Centre and it'll show you how to use those. Um, so we're going to go into more of an advanced step now because you know, we've talked about the if this then that conditional logic of journeys and a trigger is the if this part of that and then the steps are the then that component. So we've already got in this particular example a trigger and that trigger is visits any landing page. So let's work with that and see what we can do for steps. So steps are added over here with the steps uh, with steps panel um, and what we might do is let's just drop in a trigger. So a, a filter. So I'm just going to drag that over. Now the default for a trigger uh, sorry for a filter is that it is applied immediately so you check straight away to see if the contacts who you're putting through this journey meets the filter criteria so let's just say if their job title contains director there we go and so if their job title does contain director well coolia will pass them straight through this journey so let's give them a lead score in that example Let's give them a lead score of 10. All I've done is I've dragged the lead score icon from the right hand side into the journey planner, dropped it and then configured it. Okay. Um, now in this scenario, well, what happens if they don't meet that criteria? What if they aren't a director? Well, I might have added an else branch there. You see by adding an else branch it creates a, a new branch down here. And I might still want to score them. I might want to uh, give them a lead score in that case of five. Now before, actually, I'm five. <clears throat> now before we get too complicated, I'm just going to remove that else branch because I want to keep it things simple for now. Um, so we've got an example there of how to use lead scoring, and lead scoring has a few other alternatives. You can reset the assembly score, you can reset a tag, and we're going to be building on this in the next week or so. So you will see more options coming into the lead score uh, step. Um, but what you can also do here with these CRM filters is you can apply time constraints because, OK, maybe right now um, they're not a director, but maybe some point in the future they will be. And you want to keep an eye open for that when it happens. So that's what this sort of thing is for. So you can wait up to a specific date. So maybe this is an event based automation and you've got an event occurring on the 25th of June and you want to give all your contacts up to the 24th of June to sign up to your event. So you're going to check up until that point. If they do sign up before then, fantastic, we can go through the journey. If they don't sign up by then, well, in that case, you're going to follow up in a different way. So, so that's when a specific date will come in useful. You can give up to a certain amount of days. So you might have sent an email out, or you might have sent out a campaign, and you're expecting a response. And if they don't do with respond within seven days, for example, they might follow up. Um, you might want to do uh, wait up until the following Monday or whatever those those kind of time constraints are, or you might want to just do it instantly and check which is what we're going to do in this example. So that's how a filter works. Filters are really powerful. They can have time uh, constraints applied to them. They can have else conditions applied to them. You can also uh, pull your filters from save filters from your CRM, um, and you can construct quite advanced filters in here using the and or boolean logic that you will have seen in the CRM filters. And you can say that to your my filters in here as well, just by let's just create another one. Job title contains director. Let's make that an and and what should we do? Uh, my, let's do country equals UK. So we're looking for UK directors in this case. Um, I might want to save that. UK directors. There we go. Save my filter. And there we've got now UK directors under my filters. And that's now accessible everywhere within the site, everywhere within the Coolio interface, uh, from campaigns through to CRM contacts. Okay, let's hide that. So hopefully that's quite clear. So we're going to get rid of the uh, filter step. We're now going to send an email out. So if somebody visits one of our landing pages, we're going to send them an email. Well, fine, that's pretty self explanatory, isn't it? Um, you can choose from the emails available in here. Um, you will only be able to select the emails that are complete. 
So you can see this one here, hot opportunity alerts. There's no from address, there's no reply to address, so I can't select it no matter how many times I click it. Um, there we go, let's go select our purely branded email. Now, I might, and most of the time I would, want to send that email out the moment that user visits the landing page. Or well, actually, to be fair, I'll probably put a bit of a wait in there. I don't want to freak them out. So I might wait. Let's give it 15 minutes before I send that email. So I don't think we're stalking them. So visit the landing page, wait 15 minutes, send an email. Normally, you would want to send it immediately. But you might have a very specific time you want to send that email, potentially. So let's just say I want to send that between the hours of 10 and 11. There you go. Send it in the morning because you know that we want to receive that email when they're having their coffee break. I don't know. Maybe. So you can actually specify what time it goes out. Now, if that time of the day has already passed, it won't send it straight away. It'll just wait until the next, next time, the next day at that time to send that email out. Most of the time, like I say, you want to send it out straight away because you're kind of responding to the user's behavior there. You're delivering the email based on their activity and they're visiting the landing page, not on your agenda. But sometimes there's a reason to wait until the next day or a specific time. Okay, so we've looked at filters, we've looked at emails. Well, worth mentioning there, by the way, that if you hover over any of these icons, it will tell you, you see that little tooltip comes up, it will tell you what they do. So send one of your emails to a contact after they've met all your previous conditions that you know it's pretty basic stuff it explains what they what they do okay so if they have visited the landing page well i'm just going to give them a lead score i'm going to give them a lead score of two i think for that um and you can see how lead scores are applied there um you want to send, might want to send out a sales alert so you configure the email in the Cooley email builder, as you do with all emails. Um, you name it. In this case, we've named one sales alert email. Um, and you say who you want to send it to. I'm going to send it to myself. There we go. Um, if you do want to send it to multiple people, you can do. Just put a comma in there. In this case, I'm going to send it to Steve at Cooley as well. Now, it is human instinct, I know, to put a space there between uh, after the comma don't this isn't about good punctuation this is about making sure it goes to the right people uh, it doesn't need a space in between those emails it just needs to be separated by a comma okay um, you might want to update your COM let's say that this particular person got loads of stuff in the COM here but we're going to say temperature hot yeah sorry got a little bit of COVID so I'm losing my voice I'm <clears throat> might go a little bit high pitched occasionally as I do then there we go. So we're going to update the CRM there uh, as well. Um, and if you've got an integration going with your CRM there, you can actually pass that information into your CRM using Zapier or via an API in real time. Um, weights. Now, we've talked about weights here. I've already got one in place. These are what we call hard weights. And they're hard weight because Coolio will always wait that amount of time. That is opposed to conditional weights. And I talked about conditional weights in triggers. That is when you're waiting up to a particular amount of time for somebody to do something. These hard weights, you're not waiting up to 15 minutes. They are going to wait 15 minutes regardless. So we call them hard weights. Um, and you can change those to so end days, end working days, wait up to a specific date, or wait until the following Monday, should we say, at 9.15. There you go. So this will... Absolutely, if I visit the landing page, we won't do anything at all until the following Monday at 9.15, at which point, well, we won't give them a lead score, but what we'll do is we'll send them out that email we talked about before. So really, really nice and simple there, hard weights. Um, jumps, quite simple. Um, you can jump somebody to a particular spot. Let's jump onto five. So those, I mean, this one would make no sense. Why would you have steps three and four if you're going to jump them straight, straight to step five? But let's imagine that we had, well, actually, let's do it with a filter. I should get my filter in there. And let's go back to our original example, which was, what was it? It was job title contains director.
Okay, well, job title contains director. I am going to send them email one. And then I actually do want to follow up. So I'm going to send them, rather than building this journey and building this bit again, I'm going to then, after sending them email one, I'm going to jump them to step six, which is over here. Yeah. Where if they're not director, I'm not going to bother sending them email one. I'm just going to wait until Monday 9.50 and then send them this email. So you can see how that would work there. So you can create a little bit more variety, mix things up a little bit with your journeys. Um, loops, ah, loops are good. Loop, loops are important, but they are also very powerful. So you have to be careful with loops. So we tend to use loops frequently with, with lead scores. So let me drop in a lead score. So it visits the landing page. Well, let's give them two points. Okay. Now I'm going to loop that. So every time they come back to any one of my landing pages, I'm going to give them two points. Now, that's kind of cool, but what if they visit the same landing page 10 times on the same day? Should I give them 20 points? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to combine that with a wait time. And what we're going to say, perfect there, is we're going to give them two points, then we're going to wait a day, and then we're going to loop it. So that means they can come back 100 times on the same day to the landing page, they'll still only get two points. However, if they came back the next day, then they would get four points. And then they came back the next day after that, they would get six points. So we think that's a more accurate way of building up lead score. And we do recommend using loops with wait times to get a four, far more accurate uh, picture of how people are interacting with your digital assets. Um, and then finally, we have an exit. Now, you will notice that we actually, you can't drop it there. You can, there's only some places you can drop exits. Um, we preload exits in here anyway. Um, after a journey has been completed, if somebody hits an exit step, it will automatically be exited from that journey. They cannot then go back onto that journey. Yeah. So an exit is a final statement. Uh, if you want them to go back onto that journey repeatedly, just use a loop. Stick a loop in before an exit, and that will solve that one. Uh, but exits are very final, and they are very, you know, very important. Because most times you don't want people going on a journey multiple times. You don't want people receiving multiple emails or multiple alerts or CRM updates going out. So the default is always to have an exit step at the end of a journey. Cool. Well, there you go, guys. Um, I'm losing my voice, so I'm going to stop talking now. But hopefully that has been helpful. And it has given you a good understanding how to use steps. You can layer these steps up. You can, you can make multiple, uh, infinite number of uh, varieties. Uh, if you've got any questions... If you've got any use cases that you specifically want to go, hmm, but Andrew, how do you do this? You know, you know the drill. Send us a message, contact us through Fresh Desk, or you know, or just drop us a line uh, via the, uh, via your account handler. Um, excellent. I hope that helps. Um, and have a lovely rest of your day. Thank you.